Hello, it's Andy Grant with the Ask Andy Show. I'm trying to get a couple questions answered before my mom cooks lunch. <laughs> I mean, I'm home in the United States for another week or two, and uh, I'm flying to Norway then. But uh, I'm, it's the Ask Andy Show. I've traveled nonstop for 16 plus years and went to 90 countries. I got on my uh, Survivor Thailand shirt. I bought this in uh, Koh Tao Tha in th southern Thailand when I was. I uh, went down there to, you know, make jokes about the uh, Survivor show in Thailand. I don't know, it was like 10 years ago, I think. Okay, um, Joe asked, I answer questions about the uh, the global world we live in and, you know, how, how to how to live in our world, I guess. Okay, uh, Joe asked, hi Andy, this question combines two subjects that you are an expert in, living abroad and real estate. I traveled, I, I'm a real estate instructor, I'm a real estate broker, I... I sold real estate in the United States for almost uh, 14 years, Fort Wayne, Indiana. I have noticed through your YouTube videos and uh, websites that the beautiful Costa Rican beach jungle areas are filled with rambling expat estates. It appears that the total cost to build these lavish estates range from 200000 to $1 million, and they are for sale with the owners probably. Having gone back to the USA, are they ready or are they or are ready soon to return to USA. So she's saying that there's a lot of these real, you know, 200 to million dollar estates in Costa Rica that are uh, being sold by the expats. So you see this on um, escape the escapeartist.com or any uh, retire abroad thing. They're always trying to sell real estate. And you got to really key in on this because uh, why are the people that are such a great love of this country wanting to sell their real estate. They're, they're, and she's right, they're re ready to return to the USA. These homes look as though they were mostly built by solid middle class and upper middle class people who were building a monument to their desire to be rich. In fact, instead of calling it lifestyles of the rich and famous, we could call it lifestyles of the wannabe rich and famous. <laughs> okay, And uh, in, in a way, going abroad is one of the great ways to be a big fish in a small pond. I mean, if you're the, building a $200,000 house in uh, 225 country, a uh, 225 thousand dollar house, in almost 225 countries on the planet, you're going to be one of the absolute millionaires of the neighborhood because uh, the the average person is only earning about 10 to 20 dollars a day. Okay, and then you're building something that's so outrageously expensive, they can't even dream about building something this expensive. My question is this: I wonder if the Costa Rican government will ex ever eventually reclaim the land and houses after passing so-called abandonment laws or something to that effect. What a bonanza for the gov government if they did that. There appears to be most likely just sitting, just sitting on the market for years. Let's say, the houses don't sell, the owners die, and their heirs cannot sell them either. Uh, their heirs may not even want to set foot foot in Costa Rica. You know, the heirs, you know, the people that are inheriting houses are not necessarily equipped to go to another country and try to figure out how to reclaim this house that's just sitting there. And they might even be old too. Um, it's a real problem. Their heirs may may never want to sell. If their parents burn. If their parents burn through their savings, like living like a king in Costa Rica, their, their heirs may not be able to afford to travel there at all and not be able to pay property taxes or maintenance in that case. It's bye-bye castle and someone else, the government. We'll get, we'll get a steal of a deal. What do you think? Thanks for a variety of information that uh, you make and provide us and help thought profit. Okay, this is, uh, there's two or three windfalls here for a person who just wants to go live down there. You can actually go down to one of these places and live in one of these houses and rent the, a $500,000 house sometimes for $500 a month uh, because the person wants somebody to keep it from getting destroyed while they go back to the United States. Uh, that's a benefit that I've actually, uh, especially in any overbit built, uh, any has been, like there's has been places to retire, has been tourist places like uh, Acapulco, Mexico is one of the first ones I ever went to. Uh, but I always think of Sosua, Dominican Republic, because it's a, a, a has-been. It's no longer trendy. See, people go move to trendy places because they want the social status and all this stuff of being a trendy place. But the houses will just be sitting there, and they go into this overbuild situation where everybody thinks the place is they're going to get rich by building these things, and you know, then the next they open the next one down the down the road, okay? Because there's always a new one of these places, and then it's like a, a, a it's in a way it's like real estate. They have these, uh, you know, uh, 
strip malls where they build in the United States and then the new one opens up and all the tenants from there move to the new one and the old one suffers. In, real, in commercial real estate, especially in the United States, it's not the new one that suffers, it's the old ones that suffer. So you see all these ab almost abandoned strip malls in the United States that have, having trouble trying to do it. This is the same thing, it works the same thing for expat properties abroad, you have these new, because most of these people want to build a celebration of their want to be rich lifestyle. So they build these houses as a monument of their wealth and whatever, and that's, that's fine. But then they, they, some of them can't afford to lose their money, so they, they, what they got to do is they got to find the next kind of foolish person to build it. But these are really difficult to sell because the new person wants to have this new monument to their wealth. The only thing benefit is if you don't have your ego involved, you can go live in these houses for $500 a month or something, or $600 a month, you can rent a $500,000 house. You can, you can rent absolute mansions in some of these places for pittance. Why? Because they need somebody to keep them from falling apart. Or you can go house sit, even live for free. Okay, because they need to keep people from entering them and so the people can go back to the United States and get their hip replaced or something, right? Uh, there's a real windfall here. I Now, the bad part is that, you know, if you get on any website, they're always trying to sell real estate. They're trying to look for the foolish person that thinks that it's such a great deal and really... It, it, they can be on the market for 5 to 10, 15 years, and a lot of people just do abandon these. When I was in the Sosua, Dominican Republic, uh, it was one of these places that was a boom town, and everybody built these houses, built these condos, built these things like this, and they're just sitting there, and you, you hardly ever see anybody. And uh, actually, in Dominican Republic, they have a thing that if, if it's not put into a corporation, and you're not transferred correctly, the, the government actually gets it back, okay? And then, of course, it's probably a little arrangement with the real estate brokers and everybody where they're all conspiring against the, uh, you know, the 90-year-old, 80-year-old, 70-year-old expat that just isn't savvy enough to figure out how to save this thing. Um, I, even, I even talked about putting together an investment one time in, uh, in different places because it's quite, it would be quite easy to, you know, not quite easy, but if with a lot of work, you could take like uh, and go to one of these places, and you would uh, start searching for all the owners, and you'd put together. I, I seen this when I was in Real Dulce. There was all these boats just sitting there empty, <laughs> and you, you got to, you know. But it's hard to buy them because you can't find the owner, and these houses is really hard to buy them because you can't find the owner. Uh, but if you did spend the time and the due diligence to track them down, you could put them together and actually buy them probably for 25 cents on the dollar, then sell them for 50 cents on the dollar. I thought about that many a time as a, a way to help some of these people, you know, because they're going to lose the properties, right? And on the other side is they're, they're not the most trusting person because they've lived in places like Sosu or Dominican Republic or Costa Rica, and they know everybody's a scammer, okay? And that's one reason why they went home. Okay, um, from my point of view, it, there is many solutions other than to, that, that is a windfall. Uh, if you, if you want to enjoy, if, if you do the math, and if you're smart, and you can do the savvy, be savvy. Okay, how much, how much is a payment? Go calculate. Just say, call up a mortgage broker and say, how much is a payment on a house for $300,000? And they'll say, okay, it's going to be $2,200. When you can rent that place, for say $300 a month, you're actually benefiting at such a high level. You don't, it's such a high cap rate in a way. You're basically sealing in a deal to live and enjoy the benefits of living in this property for almost, uh, you know, what, $2,200 cheaper than what it costs to pay for the thing. So economically, it's just a great thing for a person that wants to go live in one of these places and, and you don't have any of the long-term commitments, you don't have any of the things. Now the bad part is all these guys are building liars. They will, they will try to tell you that it's such a great deal, it's such a wonderful place, and they, they, they're not they will evade everything in the world to say, why are you trying to sell it? Because they want to go back home or they want to get out of the thing. They know that they're going to get stung big if they just keep holding on to it because is it loses popularity, is it loses trendiness. Because contrary to what you think, people are building houses in trendy places. That is not value. This is why, you know... La, you know, Las Vegas and Southern California and all these guys, these places took the biggest hit in this real, real estate decline because they bought trendy. 
you, you don't buy trendy. What you buy, you know, if you're lucky, you can buy trendy on the way up and sell them while it's still going up. That's not what they do. They hold it until it just becomes non-trendy and they lose all their money. They don't lose all their money, but, you know, they, you see the problem, right? The point here is uh, you, can, you can rent these places, too, and they're just the same wonderful place that they was because they really don't change in their wonderful nature. If, if you got a really nice, beautiful house on a on a bay in uh, in some uh, Caribbean Caribbean island, it's a it's a beautiful place. It, but you know they're they're kind of foolish and they're doing. It. But the the real estate whole real estate uh, collapse was because people bought trendy and instead of buying value. And that's that's the hard thing. Buying value, like why is something valuable? Uh, I always say there's two ways to appraise a house. If you if you're sitting in a house in a, in a foreign country and you look out and your your house is worth as much as the cheapest house you can see. If if, if you can see a cheap house to you, because houses go down to the value around them. They, the the cheap ones go up and the low, high ones go down. Okay, so you shouldn't be able to see any houses cheaper than your own. You should be buying the cheapest house in the most expensive neighborhood. So if you're buying the cheapest house. It's called the, I think, progression theory of real estate valuation. But uh, you also, you, you know, buying a house that you can never sell to a local, think about it. It's really, if, if the local person never in their lifetime could dream of buying this thing, you're really buying a pig in a poke. You're going to really, you know, you're buying something that's a dead end. Now, that's, that's okay for some of you because you just say, I'm going to live into it. And, you know, basically, when you die, you don't care. That's okay. But that if that's not you... It's, then you better better get your mind wrapped around it that you're not going to be able to sell this thing. And, you know, when they say 90 days on the market in America, see, the average property in the United States will sell from 90 days to 180 days or something. You might as well say five years on the market for most of these properties. And when you go above, say, $100,000 outside the United States, you're, you're, you, can, you can just, uh, when it's a million-dollar property, you're basically just looking for uh, a, pig, a, a foolish person to come along and buy it. And these are what the, I'm really always sad, and I'm always trying to discourage people. Don't just get on these websites and think and and drink their Kool-Aid. They're they're lying, they're scamming, and they they would be against the law. In the, outside the United States, we don't have uh, they don't have real estate pro uh, appraisal, and they don't have uh, they don't have uh, zoning laws. They can actually build a whorehouse in next to your house or a disco next to the house that you build, and do it. Um, you really got to be careful. And I, I meet so many people. I've been traveling for 16 years, and it's absolutely staggering how many of them are wanting to sell their house. And if and and they will never admit they don't like the place because they know that that's the uh, the way to discourage a buyer, right? So they're basically, oh, the place is wonderful, but but you, oh, you would like to sell it? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to sell it. But you know, they're like, why? Oh, I don't know. You know, it's like they're evasive, right? Because they basically they, they won't admit that they're they're fed up with the place and they need to leave, right? <laughs> but the quality of life is what we do. So one day at a life, uh, carpe diem. I think uh, this Robin Williams thing should be the this. You, you really got to seize the day. You got to seize your enjoyment as a traveler, as a person living abroad, and you just look at it as a one-year increments. Just say, I'm going to seize a one-year time frame and that's all you ever get when you live in these places expat is expats it's very difficult to seal in a place where you're going to live for 10 years I mean after 10 years it's almost hopeless so really just try to say I'm going to live one year at a time okay and that's my recommendation and I'm always in favor of renting a $500,000 house for $400 a month <laughs> it's just it makes great economic sense we can pack up tomorrow